Hi there, welcome back to Dungeons and Dry Brushing. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've been talking about doing improvements to the channel for a little while now. Today's the first one. I've actually got a new camera lens on my camera as we speak. That should allow for better macro photography, that is better close-ups, both when filming and when taking pictures, so that you can see a little more clearly what I'm doing and why. That said, there is a learning curve. If anything in this video looks strange, blame that on me, the guy operating it. I'm sure the lens is fine. I just don't know what I'm doing. But at any rate, today we're going to be painting some skeletons. So these four skeletons in particular are from the Reaper 5 Kickstarter. Skeletons have been used in all kinds of fantasy. They're one of the most classic monsters there is. They get used for scares, for comedy. They show up in children's cartoon shows as both the protagonist and antagonist all the time. There are a lot of undead out there. Uh, models, I mean. And if you're like me and you do these Kickstarters, or if you've just been in the hobby a long time, then you already know that these tend to just pile up when you're not looking. Um, you end up with more skeletons and ghosts than you can shake a stick at. And, and that's fine. I know a lot of people who like to paint these up as hordes. All the skeletons look like the same basic army of creatures. That's not really for me. That's boring as a painter, in my opinion. Uh, I don't find that fun. And I like models that tell stories. So I found these four models that seem to go together. I think they're interesting and we're going to paint them to go together. Talk a little bit about their story as we go. Let's get started. The first color in my scheme is Contrast Skeleton Horde as the base for the bones. Next is Ushabti Bone, which we'll be using to dry brush over top. Then it's Cinnamon Red from Reaper and Royal Purple from Vallejo. We'll be using these for cloth and leather. Though I originally planned on using P3's meaty ochre color, I didn't end up going that way in the end. But I do use Rhinox Hide for all of the wood. And then it's Pro Acryl's Dark Blue for mixing our shadows, and Vallejo's Pale Sand for mixing our highlights. In the end, I do end up using Null Oil as well. The first step in the paint process for these guys is just covering all of the bone segments in Skeleton Horde. I'm not worried about splashing paint anywhere else as I do this because I'll be painting over it later. I like to think of these four skeletons in matching armor as having worked together. They were friends, maybe, working in the city guard to protect people. Hence the cheery purple and red I chose for their livery. I like to think they patrolled together, maybe got ales together after their shift. And when tragedy struck their city in the form of an assault by the undead, they stayed behind to continue their duty, keeping the peace and trying to evacuate people. Sadly, it looks like it didn't work out for the four of them. Now, they continue their camaraderie by patrolling a ravaged city together. Though now they seek only to punish trespassers. Once the skeleton horde contrast is dried, I take Ushabdi Bone and just do a dry brush over all of it. You can go as heavy or light on this as you like, but I find it adds some extra dimension to the shading that the contrast paint gives us. Again, I'm not particularly careful here, that's why I'm doing the bone first, so I can dry brush it without worrying, since everything else is still getting painted over. My next step is a generous coat of Rhinox Hide over all of the wooden elements. That's the shields, the haft of the spear, and the axe handle. Rhinox Hide is a rich, dark, warm brown that makes a good base color for worn, decaying wood. Of course, city guard shields are, at least in my mind, painted with guard colors. So I take our cinnamon red and royal purple and begin to stipple them roughly onto the shields. I keep them in patterns, like doing the shield in quarters or halves, but I don't want full coverage. I want it to look like the paint and decoration on the shields has chipped off over the years. Of course, they still need to be weathered, so I take Ushabti Bone again and use it to dry brush the shields. Because this is the same color that's already on the bones, I don't have to be overly precious in trying to avoid hitting them. 
So as you probably guessed, that purple and red is the start of the color scheme that I've picked out for these guys. It's also the start of the story that we're going to be telling with them. You may also have noticed that there's not a lot of fabric or leather or anything like that on the models. So why go to all this trouble with the color scheme? Well, there are more advanced skeleton models in the same Kickstarter, and I'd actually like to add these to this force at a later time. If you have some interest in how I pick the color scheme, or if you want to see videos on those kinds of meta topics, picking color schemes, um, general painting information, or DMing information, how to run games for new players, how to make interesting combat maps, that sort of thing, please let me know in the comments. I am looking to expand the type of content I do, and those ideas as well as things like 3D printing videos, things like that, it's all on the table for the coming year. Let me know what you think. Our bones and our wood are pretty much done, which makes it time to start picking out the fabric and leather. The scheme for this is simple. Everything gets a base coat in either red or purple. The scabbards, boots, armor straps, tabard, anything that's cloth of any kind. Once that's done, I take all of those base colors, either purple or red, and I add our dark blue to create shadows. Similarly, I add pale sand to make our highlights. These may look a little out of place now when they're going on, but when we hit everything with Nuln Oil, it will bring it back into line. And that is the next step once we have our highlights and shadows on. All of the cloth gets a layer of Nuln Oil. Though do try not to hit the bones here, and consider having a clean brush ready to help clean up if you make a mistake. contrast with the bright livery, I'm using a fairly dark metallic in Pro Acryl's Dark Silver. I base coat all of the metals in this. Once that's done, rather than edge highlight in a way that will make the metals look crisp and new, I'm going to take a light silver and stipple it on roughly, kind of in random places. I want the armor and weapons to seem decayed and dull, so a proper edge highlight would be out of place and isn't going to serve the story I came up with. Finally, all that's left now are the bases. I first use white paint to cover up any splashes of other paints that got on them, and then I hit them with Basilicanum Grey contrast paint. Naturally, I, I do this last step completely out of focus. Uh, you know, just, just to mix it up. Basilicanum Grey is it's a pretty neutral tone. It's not particularly warm, uh, but it's also not particularly cold. Not like, say, the blue-leaning Runic Grey speed paint. Once that's on and dry, I just paint the base rims black, and that gives us our final product. Alright guys, there we go. It was kind of fun doing that actually, to get away from the darker paint jobs I've been doing lately and get back to something that's just basic acrylics you know, some chunkier highlights, that kind of brighter, basic, warmer scheme, even for the undead. Now, they're not my favorite undead in my army by any means. That's this guy. But, you know, they're pretty good and I'm, I'm happy to add them to my collection. And that's really it at the end of the day. Not every paint scheme is going to be your favorite one. It's not all going to be knocked out of the park. And frankly, not every model, not every sculpt is worth putting that level of effort into. But what we do have here are some fun skeletons with a paint scheme that we can mimic and bring into other models in the future to make a more cohesive unit of skeletons if we want to. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.